Why are they bad? What do they do? Well, I think I think the seed oils play a role, but you know, you could say that they're engineered to be hyper palatable. We don't tire of eating them. They're highly calorie dense. And, they have and- they have other industrial additives, intentional or not, that are that are that are you know in that milieu that are not good for our health. For example, endocrine disrupting compounds and the like. There's a whole right. milieu that makes them not good for us. So would you agree then that what they do is they, they, they have some toxicity in them, at least some, and they are deprived of nutrients, right? Would you agree that that's why they're bad? Yeah. So they're low nutrient, high in toxicity. Those two things promote oxidative stress and that's what kills us. Now, there is nothing in the food supply that promotes oxidative stress more powerfully than vegetable oils because of chemistry. Hmm. Right. And, and because the dose makes the poison and those other additives, we consume those in like parts per billion parts per million at the maybe at the most, you know, maybe milligrams a day. We consume vegetable oils in ounces per day. That's millions or billions of times more. The dose makes the poison. And so I think we need to talk about these more than we have because they are right now the worst thing in the food supply by volume. Hmm. And if we want to help somebody be healthy, I think it's, there's so many bad things in the food supply. They can, it can be overwhelming to say, pay attention to this and that and the other thing. And what I've done by saying vegetable oils are the defining feature of junk food. They are what vegetable oils make junk food junk. And they're the main thing to pay attention to. That's the first thing we should be getting out of our food supply. It helps you clarify, right? And then so that you're not overwhelmed, so that you can start with a simple thing. And if you can do this one thing, which is every time you're going to buy something that's a pack in a package with an ingredients label, turn that package around and scan the ingredients for vegetable oils. Because if you can turn a package around, you can turn your metabolism around. It's that powerful. Hmm. Well, if you have a, um, if you have like a confectionery product, like say a cake, right? And you, you swap out the vegetable oil for butter or for avocado oil. That doesn't suddenly make the confectionery product good for you, right? Well, I mean, no, I don't, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't think anyone out there is suggesting that either, right? <laughs> no, that's not what we are saying, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, wanna, not- I, don't want, I don't want you to be mischaracterized, you know, because, and your right. work, which I think is so important to be mischaracterized because I'm a, you know, as I mentioned, I'm a fan and I, and I avoid these, but I also think it's important to be nuanced because today everybody seems to be talking about them and there seems to be a lot of Uh, miscommunication about the potential harms. And I think if anybody is suited to deliver this in a way that can make an, make a difference, it's you. So that's just a criticism that I've, that I've seen. And I, and I agree with it that like, you know, if you have, if you have like a cupcake, you know, I'm not saying cupcakes are bad. You can have a cupcake here and there. It's not going to sway your health in any direction, you know, positive or negative, but like a food that is objectively a junk food, right? Um, Swapping out the oil is not going to make a huge difference. Suddenly a health food. No, because right. healthy food needs to have nutrients and building blocks, right? And so just because you remove something that's toxic and full of empty calories and replace it part, you know, replace it with something that at least isn't toxic and may have some nutrients because, you know, if we replace it, if we're talking about butter versus some of the refined oils that are in my middle group of okay, but not great, right? Like palm oil, uh, that's okay, but not great because palm oil is very saturated. It's very stable, but there's refined, no, no, almost no nutrients in it. Right. So that's okay. I'm not going to say it's toxic. I'm not going to say it's a necessarily a deal breaker in a given food. Right. But if, uh, but just removing, just removing the toxic thing and replacing it with something that's slightly better doesn't somehow make all the other ingredients nutritious. And I, I think if somebody out there is saying that that's what the seed oil argument is, you should unfollow them. They're, <laughs> they're being absurd. That's absurd to suggest that. I hadn't actually seen that. So thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, of course. Um, I th- so I think it's pretty easy to keep canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil out of your home. 
Um, and people absolutely should, should be, should, uh, you know, get more familiar with nutrition facts, labels, and ingredients lists and the like. How do you avoid these ex exposure to these oils when you're eating out? Yeah, so eating out is a challenge, uh, but there's ways to navigate it. And uh, what I uh, do myself is I don't bother. I don't do this. I learned this the hard way. Do not say, hey, what kind of oil are you using? They won't know. And, and, the, and it means that they don't really know if you ask that open-ended question, they don't really know what you're after, right? They don't know what the right answer is. So tell them the right answer. Tell, do this instead. Do you have anything back there that you can cook in butter? And I mean butter, not margarine or butter oil. Or say the same thing with olive oil, right? And then you have to caveat that too. I mean 100% olive oil, not a blend, right? But I personally prefer butter uh, as it tastes better. So like that's just one tip. And I have dozens more in, um, in the last part of the book, because in order to rehabilitate our metabolism, it doesn't just come down to avoiding vegetable oils. We also have to, we also need nutrients, right? And one of the nutrients we've been terrified of is cholesterol. Cholesterol is a nutrient. And so I, I spend some time helping people understand the benefits of cholesterol to the body and the benefits of having high LDL cholesterol. Because the idea that LDL cholesterol causes heart disease is fabricated. It was fabricated, it is not true. And I talk about the history of that idea. You've probably had maybe, I'm, I'm sure maybe your listeners are a little bit familiar with that idea, but maybe they don't know that that idea comes from the American Heart Association, which is not a government organization. Like a lot of folks out there don't trust the government and they just like say, oh yeah, of course, don't trust the American Heart Association. Amer it's important to know that they're not a government organization because they are a private medical organization and they educate doctors and dietitians and everyone with a license about what a healthy diet looks like. And the American Heart Association accepts money from vegetable oils and created a lie about animal fat. And I tell that story and the history of all that and who was involved and how it played out in the middle section of the book, Dark Calories. And it's a very important story because it, if you take away this myth of cholesterol, then nobody would have ever believed that vegetable oils could be healthy because they were first Remember, you have to remember, they were first promoted as heart healthy. Now, uh, you know, maybe your audience doesn't even see them that way. But the, and the argument is, are they neutral or are they the worst thing in the food supply or something in between? But they used to be promoted as heart healthy. Hmm. And again, this gets back to if somebody lies once, don't trust them. And these people, the American Heart Association, who lied about vegetable oils being the healthier of the healthiest kind of fat out there, they are the ones who are leading the medical thought. They're leading what doctors think a healthy diet looks like. And that means that when you go to get a physical exam, you're entering a system that is designed to make you sick because if you're healthy, Doctors will think that's a problem because healthy people tend to have higher cholesterol, period. Hey, if you liked that video, you need to check out this one here and I'll see you there.